Hi there, and welcome back to another edition of Gray Hair and Tattoos. My name is Lonnie, and today we are going to be talking about happiness um, and, and actually choosing happiness. I get asked all the time, and I think that this is a very legitimate question, but I get asked all the time, you know, Lonnie, how are you so happy all the time? And I always start off every answer to that question, you know, just basically stating, I'm not happy every single day. I have bad days, I have good days. I did a, a, a YouTube not too long ago about everybody has bad days. But for the most part, for, the, for my general way I, I look at life, I choose happiness. To me, it is a conscientious choice. Um, good things happen, bad things happen, but I still choose to be happy. And so I just kind of wanted just to maybe, you know, talk a little bit about this subject, kind of break it down a little bit and show you my perspective of how I do it and where it has gotten me to where I can do um, social media basically based on, um, on happiness. So let's start, let's start my journey. Okay, my journey is one of um, ups and downs. My journey is one of episodes in my life that were not nice, they were not good. If you follow me and um, you know my past history, I am an alcoholic. Um, I was an alcoholic for the majority of my adult life. Now, I chose sobriety six years ago, and I say I chose it, it was my choice because I feel that that gives me the power. It was my conscientious decision to change my life and to change it for the better. So at that point, um, from that moment going forward, from that day of sobriety going forward, I have made it a daily, um, a daily ritual, a daily meditation, a daily um, mindset to make every day positive, to make every day happy. Because if you know anybody who has an addiction or if you have a, a, an addiction yourself, you'll know that the simple fact that it is a mind prison. It is, um, you, you are stuck in there. And it's not a good place. It's not a happy place. So when I chose to leave that place, I chose happiness at the same time. I told myself I wasn't going to have that mindset. I wasn't going to give that mindset the energy and allow it to um, be the driving force in my life. So that is what I say, that's how I chose happiness. Now, it's not a blink of the eye kind of choice. For me, it wasn't. It's not something that was hereditarily easy. It wasn't something that I had my mindset um, geared for. So what I'm trying to say is it's my, my train of thought, my inner voice, my um, self-worth, how I looked at myself, wasn't in a positive, happy manner. So when I chose my happiness, I had to basically hit the reset button and start programming myself in a different way. Now, it's again, it's not a blink of the eye or a snap of the finger. This is something that I had to work on on a daily basis. And it is something that I had to, um, it was a learned behavior. I mean, I always tell people all the time, you know, you look at a gymnast and they make it look so easy. But there's decades of training, there's decades of practice, there's decades of trying to improve their, their sport and their, their craft and their skill. I look like at happiness the same way. It is something that we have to work on on a daily basis and to achieve the level of happiness that we want. So um, getting back to where I started. So, my, my journey started with, again, reprogramming myself. So part of my journey of choosing happiness, I had to stop 
and listen to my, my inner voice. I had to stop and actually listen to myself. And it really amazed me because I didn't realize um, how much I talked to myself. Our, our inner dialogue never stops. We are constantly telling ourselves something. And what you need to do is you need to figure out what is it that you're telling yourself. Are you telling yourself positive things that make you happy? Or are you telling yourself negative things that make you sad? Um, where I started being able to pick up on it the most were those quiet times. For example, you know, in the shower in the mornings, what was I telling myself? Was I telling myself I was going to have a good day? Was I telling myself that um, I was a good person? Was I telling myself positive things? Um, another spot where I really found the voices in my head kicking in um, is in my car when I drive, when I'm driving alone and I'd be at a stop sign and I was, I was shocked at how mean I was to myself. I was robbing myself of that happiness by the things I was telling myself. So I was, I remember sitting at a stoplight and I'm like, oh my God, I am the meanest person I think I've ever met to myself. And once I started acknowledging what I was telling myself and I started acknowledging those um, not nice comments to myself, I was able to stop myself. I would literally have conversations with myself out loud in my car. I'd be like, Lonnie, don't talk to yourself like that. Say something nice. And over time, those negative, mean things turned into positive things. Now, I talk about this a lot, and I'm going to, I'm going to touch upon this right now, but I'm always preaching self-love. Self-love is something completely different than um, being um, selfish or, you know, being conceited. We, we get those two mixed up. Self-love is when you want the best for yourself. Self-love is telling yourself good things. Self-love is, again, taking yourself out to ice cream if you're not having a good day. Self-love is making sure that your mindset is positive and your thoughts are good. You know, being selfish is when you go and you take the, you know, the last piece of pizza and you don't offer it to anybody else. Or being selfish is if you go out and buy yourself a new pair of shoes instead of putting food on the table for your family. Big difference big, big difference. And you just have to know that self-love is not a bad thing. It is something that we all need. The root of confidence, the root of happiness is self-love, knowing how important it is for you to be okay. You, I always look at it this way. You can't save somebody else if you haven't saved yourself. So you have to tell yourself that you are worthy of all these good things in order for you to turn around and spread that same message to other people. Again, it, that was not an easy concept for me to acknowledge or to even practice. I used to have to tell myself every morning when I was brushing my teeth, Lonnie, it's okay to be okay. It's okay to be happy. It is okay to have good thoughts. And I had to, again, I keep saying, I had to push that reset button and I had to reprogram myself. But it is doable. I always say, and I'm a big advocate of this, um, keep a journal, you know, just kind of, um, I always, when I journal, I always just like to, to set the tone. I like to set the mood. You know, I'll go to a quiet place, um, you know, put on some music, just kind of sit there for, for a moment, let myself drop in, and I will write whatever comes to my mind. Now, my journaling doesn't have to make sense. My journaling can be a sentence, a thought, just all jumbled together. Because the only thing I'm doing is, is I'm releasing it. I'm getting it out of my consciousness. I'm getting it out of my psyche. Um, what I can do later is I'll go back and I'll read it and I can interpret it and I can rewrite it if I want to 
But journaling is so important. And the reason I want you to journal if, if you want to have this journey of happiness is because you will pick up keys. You will pick up things that perhaps you're telling yourself more than you should. You know, um, you can be body shaming yourself and not even know it, and that will lead to unhappiness. So you need to journal and just start writing things down. I hear it all the time. You know, I, I can't journal. I don't even know where to start. Well, there are guided journals. There are journals that specifically ask you questions to start um, your, your, your writing, to start that self-exploration. Um, I am also a big ad advocate of meditation. And I hear this all the time also that, um, you know, Lonnie, I can't meditate. I lay down and I can't not stop thinking. And I totally get it because that is how I started when I started meditating. I remember the first time I meditated, I spent more time looking out of the side of my eye trying to see what other people were doing instead of looking within. So just like choosing happiness, this is something you have to work on. It is something that over time, you will get that skill down but you just have to allow yourself the time and the learning curve to get to that spot. So meditation is so important. It will unlock any barriers that are keeping you from being happy. Um, sometimes meditation is good and sometimes it's scary because you will go to areas in your mind that perhaps you've had um, pushed aside for a while. When you're ready, you will address it. If you don't want to address it, don't. But just realize it's there and you know work your way around it to get to your happiness. Now, I can't say this enough again, and because I there's so many things I can't say enough, but do things that make you happy. You know what, if you enjoy shopping, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. You can just go and spend a couple of hours just looking at different stores you know, um, just walking around. It's okay to do something that makes you happy. I, I cannot say enough, and again, you know, I, I keep saying that. Um, hiking, getting out to nature. It's amazing how much nature will actually help us reset. It is just, um, it's beautiful. It, it like releases energy. So go for a walk in the park, um, go for a hike, um, just do something, go down to the beach and look at the waves, uh, wherever you are, find a spot in nature that you can go to and just drop in and you will be amazed at the thing, you'll be amazed at how quickly your mindset will turn around. So the most important, the most important point of this whole episode is just knowing that you deserve to choose happiness. You deserve every morning to wake up going, I'm gonna be happy today. There is nothing wrong with that. It, again, it doesn't make you selfish. It doesn't make you anything but happy. Um, sometimes society looks at us a little bit like, oh, look at them, they're just skipping along. They have no responsibilities. They're not, you know, they're not um, this or they're not that. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is what is in your head and what is in your heart. So you need to follow both. Listen to yourself when you're saying nice things and follow your heart. And again, not every day is perfect but every day is our gift and we just have to live it and just live it in the way that we want to live it. So I hope that my little steps for, you know, how I chose happiness will help you choose happiness. Um, if you have any tips that you would like to share, please let me leave them in the comment section. Um, I, I always like my social media platforms to be an open platform for discussion. Um, if you have a tip you would like to share, um, by all means, please do. I, I, it's always appreciated. Um, and if you would like to find me on other forms of social media, 
you can find me anywhere talking about happiness, um, maybe showing you a new outfit, just trying to show you that happiness is out there. Um, every time I see something negative, I try to come back with something positive. So if you want to follow me and find that those messages, you can look for me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Spotify, Pinterest, um, tic Twitter, always under Gray Harry Tattoos. It's my, it's who I am and it's my platform to spread this message. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, as always, please hit that like button. If you would like to hear what I have to say next or maybe see the outfit I like next, hit that subscribe button. Um, until next time, please remember to tell yourself, tell yourself something nice. You are absolutely perfect the way you are. And I will see you on the next episode. Bye.